Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen von der IFA in Berlin. Samstag ist es, 10 Uhr. Ich habe ein bisschen die Nase zu von der blöden Aircondition hier. Ich bin nicht erkältet, aber ich habe die Nase zu. Wir legen wieder los. Heute sind es, glaube ich, insgesamt ähm, neun Stunden, die wir live streamen werden. Äh, das heißt, ich werde dann heute Abend wahrscheinlich mir wieder anhören, wie, ja, keine Ahnung, als hätte ich zehn Stunden am Fußballplatz gestanden. Ähm, erster Gast heute, ähm, Steve Chippy Payne, freue ich mich ganz besonders drauf. Engländer, der in Bonn lebt, ähm, den ich jetzt seit... Steve, we know each other for seven years, eight years, yeah, we met, something uh, like that. 2006, CB. right? Or 2007. 2007. You were working on, um, oh, EPS Center. EPS Center at that time. <laughs> Jesus, those were the days. Yeah. And you just started uh, CarryPad. Yeah, I started CarryPad at that time. Yeah, that's right. 2006, wow. started CarryPad about three days before Intel and Microsoft launched the UMPC, which was a seven-inch tablet. <laughs> <laughs> the tweener that was... Yeah, to fail. Seven inch tablets failed, of course. That was quite interesting. 2006, um, the year of the seven inch tablets. Or not. Or not. <laughs> well, but sometimes you know, just a little bit too early to go to the market, right? Well, of course, the concept in general was quite different at that time. Uh, I, I remember well, Microsoft at that time was launching the Origami project, right? Yeah. So that was the very first kind of concept of, of, of bringing a tablet form factor just to the next level. And Absolutely. It's funny, you look back at 2006 and what, what came out in terms of marketing there, it's just, you could run it today and it would be exactly the same, you know, lifestyle, a bit of work, um, location and communication. The ad that they ran in 2006, you could run today at any oh, no, Absolutely. It's, it, it was exactly the same. Y you know what, are they on YouTube somewhere? Yeah. We, sh we, sh we, should, we should rep some of them, yeah, right? We should. Totally. Yeah, yeah you, could, you could relabel them, rebrand them, and it would work today. Okay, you'd have to kind of slim down that tablet a bit from, from, <laughs> from 30 millimeters to 9 millimeters, but... Yeah. But the whole concept behind this, the whole kind of emotional approach that they were using in the ads at that time. The user scenario was exactly what exactly they're using right now. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's and, interesting. And they had started, Microsoft had started Origami, I think, two years before. Otto Burks was the guy that Exactly, that he was project. running the Origami project. Exactly. Yeah, I met him at, in, 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 in Taiwan yeah, that day. great guy. And, and oh, yeah, he was and, fun. And you have to say, he's a visionary. 2005, they decided that, you know, a personal tablet was going to work. Yeah. Unfortunately, they finished their project in 2006 and then went, went to market with some OEMs in Taiwan, yeah. brought out a product that just wasn't right. Yeah, I mean, the, the platform wasn't right, the OS wasn't right. The products were quite shitty. And they, they were, were terrible. Gosh, they were expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was My it like first like VRC7 based uh, tablet was 1100 euros <laughs> with an 800 by 480 screen. Oh, remember, what was the old. Oh. O2? Not O2. Uh, OQO. Yeah, OQO. 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 That was like $1,500 or $2,000, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the build quality was absolutely amazing. It, it looked great. It looked yeah, great. It was yeah. about that thick. Yeah. It had, uh, I think it might have even had a 1024 by 800 screen. You it know? came with 3G. Came with 3G and, you know, actually spinning hard drive. <laughs> it was a full Windows on there? It was full Windows <laughs> XP. XP, no, full Windows like, XP uh, touch. Exactly. Like a real hard drive. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, a 1.8 inch uh, hard drive. I, st I still have a, I still have a Villev. Um, was it uh, an S5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've still got a couple of those in, I, in my I still museum. Have the, I still have the Gigabyte. Yeah. Right, which was also a really cool one. Yeah, that it was, was running a special so Linux at that time. So that was actually when Intel got got in on the scene and kind of re tried to resurrect what was happening and to call it MIDs, mobile internet devices. Yeah, yeah. Which what we call a phablets today, basically. Yeah. Right. Uh, five inch, six inch, seven inch devices. They yeah. were running a Linux, a cut down Linux. Um, uh, they were running a basic processor inside. Okay, it was an Intel Atom x86. Um, but I remember there was a great slide they had, and there was four sections. I think it was location, social, um, uh, f entertainment, which included gaming and video, and then a small section on the right hand side, which was work. Right. And this really is the balance we have on our tablets and tablets today, right? Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing. It's, it's, it's really quite interesting to see how, how this developed, and especially for a company like Microsoft, right? I mean, they all, in, in, in general, the tablet development is like 40 cates old. Mm -hmm. Inside the late yeah, 60s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but to see what Microsoft did from the beginning of this millennium, 
right, where they had um, the first tablet PCs at that time, where, where Bill Gates was constantly pitching oh, the yeah. tablet PC as the next big thing. Then Otto Burke starting with the Origami project, and you're absolutely right, he was a visionary at that time, yeah. Yeah. because he didn't only kind of invent the 7-inch tablet category, which is completely killing the market right now for 10 inches, yeah. right, and which, which also shows you the, how, how minds like Steve Jobs could be completely wrong about yeah. guessing yeah. what was happening in the market when he said, you know what, and no one's ever going to use a 7-inch tablet, that on arrival, right, and now, yeah. now it's eating into their iPad, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the iPad 4 sales, mm -hmm. right? It's really killing their margins. Um, but also thinking about like phablets and this category, right? So Microsoft somehow got the idea right yeah. and what they wanted to, uh, what the ultimate goal was, but they just couldn't execute it at yeah. that time. You know, and, and also, you know what? The technology wasn't there. No, the technology wasn't there, the software wasn't there, and the OS wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, it's very similar to what's happening, I think, to the smartphones today, right? Everyone's got the idea. Everyone knows what it needs to be, right? Yeah. Um, the trouble is, the technology, the software, and probably the, uh, the, the user interface, like the touch or perceptual user interface that's needed there, is not ready. Yeah. So we're at the same sort of thing where it's going to take, I think, another five years. But, uh, but you're right. It's, it was too early. The, the, yeah. Everyone has, and the same with us. We sit yeah. here and we talk about things that might happen in five years. But well, we can't execute them because the, the technology is not there or the exactly. interfaces or the, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a major problem. So executing too early killed them, really hurt them badly. And, and oh my God, that, that, we're not talking about a couple of hundred millions, right? That, that, oh, that, no. that, that's a billion dollar market in terms of R&D and in terms of the marketing, getting the OEMs to cooperate with you. We're talking about billions of dollars that got burned in these days. Well, I wouldn't say burned, right? They made experiences. And they're still taking advantage of this. Mm -hmm. They still created a benefit for their R and D teams and for the software engineers at that time. Yeah, without that research, yeah, things don't. No, we wouldn't forward, be right? there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have learned that resistive touchscreens are absolutely <laughs> terrible <laughs> for consumer devices, right? Yeah. Um, and moving parts, you know, fans and, and hard spinning hard drives. You know, the development of the EMMC and the SSD uh, probably came out of that. You, you know, had like 1.5 or 1.9 inch super small hard drives, like from oh, Toshiba and Fujitsu. Or yeah. 1.8, right? Terribly slow. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, exactly, uh, uh, terribly slow. And very. Uh, it's like a class two SD card. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, an SD card would be faster now, right? But fragile as well, so you couldn't. You, you couldn't drop this. There was one device we just yeah. talked about it, the OQO. Oh yeah. Which you could throw up into the air, and as you threw it up, it would go. <laughs> <laughs> it detected the. It detected the hard. Uh, the, the the drop. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Drop, and then uh, locked the hard drive and protected it, but. Uh, yeah, that, that was bad times. But, um, yeah, uh, moving on from that, Microsoft spent a lot of money, but Intel also spent a lot of money. But what I will say is that they started um, Atom at that time as well. Exactly. So coming yeah. out of that 2006, 2007 experiment was, you know, we need to do something for the low power market. And I think that uh, when you look at the development cycle for a processor, which is five years, they, we're now getting to the point where their hardware, the processors, are ready, fit, fit for that market, mm. right? Mm. It took six years, well, 2000, yeah, seven mm. years it took mm. for them to get the whole thing. That's how long it takes, you know, uh, the hardware to develop. R remember the first Intel smartphone that we saw in 2009 at IDF, how that looked like? Um, I well, I, just, I, ha I had it. It was like this, right? It was like one and a half centimeters or something. Yeah, it was built, a brick. Put together by a, a Finnish company, I believe. Yeah. Got the name of the company. And it was running, wasn't it running Windows also at that time? No, it was running. No, it was uh, a Moblin. Moblin. A, an early yeah. Moblin version. Early which Moblin. turned into Meagle later. Which turned into Nokia pulling the. Uh, uh, yeah, Nokia pulling the rug from it, thanks to Mr. Elop. But anyway, that's another, another subject we can talk about later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had it. Um, Intel sent me it. I don't think they should have done. And it was hot. It was heavy. It had about two hours battery life when you were really using it. Yeah. And. Um, I think a week later, they got told never to give it out to the media again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Um, but you know what? Let, let's stay a little bit with Intel. Not only that, because we're in the Intel blogger, too, but for years, I'm constantly having talks and special great arguments uh, 
about uh, performance per wall, about risk architecture versus a a x86, yeah. about what's best for a mobile device right now. Yeah. And you know what? It's quite interesting because I think um, a lot of people, but also analysts in the industry, somehow underestimated what Intel could do with it. Uh, Absolutely. Um, even though I've been constantly pointing out, guys, seriously, listen to me. Um, when we're talking about x86 uh, against the recent ARM uh, platform, um, there, there are still two generations ahead. Yeah, we, there's still some gravitation going on some over here. <laughs> <from> <laughs> uh, 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 microphone. Oh, that's a mic. That's that's a mic. Exactly. Hopefully, that's um, to melt off the side. I'm, I'm trying to educate them about about the advantages of x86 uh, in terms of where we are. Well. Of course, x86 is on 64-bit on architecture for like three, four years right now, more, yeah, or yeah. even more, yeah. right? ARM is getting there by, um, by the end of this year. Right? Well, we already have prototypes, and we would see our first ARM's 64-bit uh, uh, in mass production. I think Samsung is going to kick it off uh, by the end of the year. Um, when we're talking about, especially when we're talking about performance, because we have this uh, uh, top to the bottom race for Intel, right? They're coming here from the performance side, yeah. and now they need to do, go down to the low power consumption side. And ARM is there with a the low power consumption, a highly embedded chipset, yeah. and need to head up there uh, adding That's performance, right. which also means that they have to add a lot of features. Uh, from the performance guys, like having a bigger L2 cache, right, to get a, get yeah, more bang in there, absolutely. which is also hitting them in terms of um, the power consumption. Yeah, yeah. So, I think right now we are at a point where we see that um, there is no real advantage anymore for the ARM guys. Yeah, from a consumer's perspective, for now, the CPU side in terms yeah. of performance. I'm not talking about the GPU right now because I still think that they have the edge over Intel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, from a consumer perspective now, it doesn't actually make much difference whether you've got to x86 or risk inside now. Um, that, that game is, that, that challenge is, is over. The thing is now is how do you attract the OEMs? How do you yep. get people to use your architecture to make the devices? Now, I think we could say that uh, Intel has, has pulled level with some of the good stuff that's happening yeah. in the ARM ecosystem, but now they need to pull ahead. They need to offer some unique selling points. Uh, you know, graphics is something they really need to work on. Um, they need to work on their pricing. Um, yeah. We could talk about that in a minute because there's a couple of there's a product here which shows that pricing can change and Intel are moving yeah. in that direction. Um, so now it's it's, it's 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 up to Intel to move forward. Yeah, Arm are moving forward as well, right? but yeah. uh, I don't know where, where that's going to go. I think yeah. we're going to have a two-player game for a long, long time, which is great, right? Because yeah, for us, we finally it's got competition. I would love to see Arm evolving onto the desktop because I'm sorry because. It seems to me that AMD is just not getting there anymore, right? Well, AMD just, plus ARM could be the, yeah. M maybe that's the color because yeah, yeah, this would all... Hybrid uh, CPUs maybe. Yeah. The, that which brings us to actually a, quite an interesting point, which is the dynamic range of a device. Like, you want a device that's really, really low power, but when you want to do stuff like video editing, you want it to, to ramp up and be able to do that high-end stuff. You even... I think in the future we'll want to dock your smartphone and be able to use it as a desktop. So right. it's not just about getting different SKUs that have different power, it's about being able to range across with one chipset, range across like super low power, standby, always on, up to you know a video editing sort of scenario. Yeah. And um, well, when we look at Clover Trail and Has Haswell and Bay, Bay, uh, Bay Trail, then we're getting into those high dynamic range uh, platforms. I don't see anything from the ARM side yet that's really as dynamic as that. Right. And I think that's what the consumer might need, is something that's, that can go low, 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 and then high power stuff when they need it. I mean, especially companies like Qualcomm, they still have the edge over uh, Intel in terms of you know how much they can put into their SOCs, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when we're talking about their, their 3G, 4G modules, right? Wi-Fi, GPS, right? I mean, they, they have experience for like 20 years of integrating this, right? that on of the integrating SSC, this on into a ship set yeah. right and they also have a proper GPU right with, with Adreno 330 and, and, and same with with Nvidia now they're bringing you know what their Kepler 
uh, uh, to the mobile device with the next generation. These are insane GPUs in a mobile these device. These are ga gaming right? GPUs, right? These are, uh, these are yeah. real gaming GPUs. Yeah. I, I, have, I have this NVIDIA Shield, and I love it. It is absolutely amazing, right? So you get the Tegra 4. Well, it's... Um, it's a, uh, um, they're using an active cooling fan for this, right? because otherwise it wouldn't work. Really? There. So there's a twenty. There's a fan in and on. Well, exactly. <laughs> there's also a twenty-eight watt hour battery in there. Oh, right. that so you're getting idea. over ten hours of battery life on this device, full right. brightness, gaming, non-stop right. gaming, right? And so try to do this on your smartphone. You're done in two hours, yeah, absolutely. right? Yeah, uh, you're, you're done on most. Max. You're done on an ultrabook in two hours yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, um, so, but and the cool thing about this is, well, first of all, it, it feels a little bit like a. Like, like, like this. Remember these old Microsoft Sidewinder pads? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But with two analog sticks, yeah. right? And you have the pedals on the back. Yeah. Four of them. Um, it's like 520 grams. It feels heavy, but. The way they balance it out is just absolutely perfect. This I've is, never tried one, but because uh, I'm, I'm not a gamer, it's so. still going to be here tomorrow. No, I'm off um, tomorrow. Just, I, uh, I just put it, actually put it out of my bag to, uh, this oh, morning, right. and um, so. Well, Nicole, thank you. Nicole is just having some buns over here. That looks great. Well, it's nice to see you having a bre your breakfast. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> um, the performance of this is just absolutely amazing. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's by f it's the fastest. ARM SOC platform that you can get right now. I've benchmarked it to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 800. Yeah. It, 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 it's just about, depending on the benchmark, 20 to 30 percent faster. Well, again, it's actively cooled and not in a 6.5 millimeter thick device yeah, yeah, like okay. we, yeah, we yeah. used on the Xperia Z Ultra. But the cool thing about this, not only that you can play all your Android games, so I've been downloading all the emulators. There's an SD card slot on the back. I had a 32 gigabyte SD card in there, right? I was playing all these games, <laughs> old Super Mario from Nintendo yeah, 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even have a PlayStation Portable uh, emulator on there. You can put anti-lice and you can put anisotropic filtering uh, in there. Uh, and it's running at like 30, 40 frames a second. It yeah, looks yeah. beautiful. And, and you can stream from, you can stream when you have a kind of middle class uh, NVIDIA graphics card, GTX 660. You can stream your games from your PC onto the shield. Yeah, right? yeah. And it has also a, a, a mirror cast uh, an option. And, and then this is a huge market, right? Gaming is a massive market. I'm not gaming, I, I never covered gaming, but you, you're quite into gaming, right? I saw you well, actually playing, yeah, a playing little football bit, yesterday. Right. Oh, yeah, that, that was fun. <laughs> I think I played you once online with Xbox on the racing game. I gave, yeah, I, I yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, but it's a huge, huge market, right? Oh, and it's yes. something that's really marketable as well. It's great for press events, isn't it? Huge Absolutely. games with graphics. Look it's at great, the games uh, come yeah. in Cologne. Uh, oh, that, oh, is, that is mayhem. That's Sheer nuts. madness. Yeah. I've been doing events for seven years. Years and I've never seen anything as mad yeah, as that. Yeah, yeah. It was nuts. I took my daughter. The queue outside was like an hour long. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so I had to get the press pass out. And, oh, excuse me. And we, got, we got in. Yeah. Unbelievable. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Yeah. There was hour queues for everything. We queued up for an hour just to see the Xbox One play, play it for five minutes. But there were queues that were two hours long for the VR stuff and the, and the, the top games. Unbelievable. It's a yeah. huge, huge market. And the mobile gaming market is even bigger. Yeah. Right. So I just met a guy on the train, actually. We, we got lost and we started, oh, you're going to IFA? Yeah, I'm going to IFA. Mm. His, his friend is, do, is doing Flash games still on, on, on websites, and he's getting huge, huge traffic. And this is old, old, what I call old Flash games. That's interesting. Talking about Flash is dead, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but you know what? Let, let, let's just leave a little bit this tablet and uh, mobile, smartphone, whatever market and let's talk about ultrabooks because your site is still ultrabooknews.com right we st you still have carry pad but ultrabooknews.com yeah. is your main site i still have ultra i still have umpc portal carrypad.com mm. i i leave the tablet stuff oh, to, right. the, to the teams now <laughs> you know i'm a singleton so trying to cover tablets is, is it's not possible for me yeah. so i am um, sort of switched over to ultrabooks which i believe are coming back down into well, coming down into that range and then going up, it's this is dynamic range thing again. Yeah. Yeah. So Ultrabook News was was started about an hour after the press conference at Computex <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> I'm sitting at home. I oh, remember that. Jimmy and me were sitting in the press conference, and then they came up with the term Ultrabook, and we were sitting there on domain registration. 
registering domains, right, for <laughs> Ultrabooks. So. And, then, and then I got an email. Uh, do, do you know who got ultrabooknews.com? Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> How do I get ultrabooknews.de? You got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I have, like, ultrabookforums.com. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I never, ever made anything with it. Maybe I should just put it up and, and get a forum yeah. on there. Yeah, no, but, but I, I, so I, I've been doing that since 2011, and... Um, you know, it's it's really strange because coming out of what's happening in that area is our tablets. I mean, you've seen the um, Sony Tap 11, right? Yeah, beautiful. So that's device. a core Haswell based device that's yeah. been brought down out of what's happening in 9.9 millimeters. Unbelievable. A core i, Jesus. It's a Core i5 in there. 128 <laughs> yeah. gig SSD is a yeah. full yeah. quality uh, Wi-Fi card yeah. in there. It's 9.9, 780 grams. A yeah. Clover Trail yeah. tablet, yeah. an Atom <laughs> tablet that small would be good, but this is a core tablet it's incredible yeah, yeah. so um, so I'm now at a point two and a half years later where I'm getting back to the tablets again yeah. it's all coming back to the tablets yeah, and uh, yeah. it's all coming back to consumer screens you know one screen in front on your hands it's um, isn't, isn't it quite amazing to see how let's see how the notebook industry how the ultra book industry and form factor also changed and, and the way also Intel was kind of embracing what their what the OEMs wanted to do with it, with this two-in-one strategy. Mm. Uh, I think this was very crucial for this market. And to be honest, I see more innovation in this so-called dead PC market than I can see on the mobile platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Two-in-one is, is critical, I believe. It's the, it's the way that they're going to bridge themselves from PC into tablet. You know, if you want to categorize it, it's very difficult to categorize it these days. You've got tablets that can turn into PCs and dock. Mm. Uh, I saw the HP uh, Smart Pad X2 last night, mm. which looks like the Envy X2, but it's running Android instead of Windows. And uh, so the, you look at the two devices together, mm. and they look exactly the same, but one's running Android, yeah. one's running Windows. But um, yeah, so it's critical that they start to use this two in one category to just try kind, kind of regenerate interest in, in what's happening in the PC market. I mean, let's face it, and you, you live in Taiwan, you know this is how easy, right? There was not, not, not a lot of innovation going on. They didn't do on. anything. Laptops were getting pretty boring. Well, how, how, how's our next generation going to look like? Hey, how about this clamshell design from Toshiba from 1982? Yeah, yeah, you know. That's so, ridiculous. So, so what, if you, you can say anything you want about the Ultrabook project, but what it has done is gave, given the manufacturers a kick up the yes. arse Say, so let's get some innovation. Let's do some change. You need to change, otherwise you're dead. Yeah. We've already yeah. seen things tailing, yeah. seeing things tailing off, yeah. uh, and hopefully through this 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 kick up the ass that Taiwan needs, yeah. we'll get some regeneration and, and new product. Like you say, we're already seeing the first of the innovation coming out through that project. The two in ones, the dockables. Um, there's a way to go. I've seen some pretty heavy two in ones that are not very <laughs> practical. <laughs> this well, not only because. Uh, Lenovo is one of our main sponsors here, but to be honest, I think the yoga, remember that when we saw it at CES January 2012 for the first time, yeah. and we looked at the hinge mechanism, right? Yeah. That, that was absolutely brilliant. This is some proper engineering that was yeah. uh, going into this, right? yeah. and the, yeah. how solid this is. We had the Lenovo guys uh, yesterday over here, and they're testing it 25,000 times, really? the hinge, right? So It needs uh, to be, doesn't it? it uh, yeah. To be. It I have to say, I made a mistake. I, with have you seen a, the, 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 uh, the ThinkPad yoga? Well, I was going to talk about the ThinkPad what yoga they, in what, a minute. What they that were adds even the, more innovation with the keyboard, shit. right? The lift and lock keyboard. That is amazing. Because that was one of the things. When I first got hold of the Yoga 13 CS, uh, back in 2011, I flipped it back and I'm like, this feels really, really awkward with the kit. I, I actually said, well, I don't I think mean, this is going to fly. Well, I mean, they're switching them off, right? Yeah. So they're switching them off, but it just feels very awkward. It was a 1.4 or 1.5 kilogram tablet. I was like, no, this is not going to work. Turns out the Yoga 13 was one of the most popular of the uh, convertibles last year. Actually, they Probably told the me, I think they, they got way over 30% of the uh, of the twin one or convertible Convert market. market. Yeah, yeah. So they're basically the market. Well, they have the market leader right now, anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. PC category, right? Yeah. But they they where did you find this kind of yeah. two in one strategy or two in one platform? But now we see all the other guys jumping in, right? Yeah. I think what what Sony announced over here was just an amazing uh, uh, portfolio. Um, like I said, the tap. What's the other one? Uh, Fit. This is the Fit Flip. It's, it's, it's called the Fit Flip 
and then they have the 14, the fi uh, 13, 14, and 15 inch exactly. versions of that, which is a once it's again, an amazing a, yeah, mechanism. A completely new bit of engineering that if I'd have sat down for two hours with a pen and paper, I would never have scribbled out that. Yeah. The way they've done that is quite yeah. amazing. So, yeah, again, innovation. Have, have, have you seen their teaser video of this, where they're just taking a piece of paper no. and doing exactly this folding? Oh, right. There, there's an origami guy just oh, using there's just a piece of paper, and he's creating out of this piece of paper the whole concept of the notebook and then of this flip. Right. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. It's a good, it's a good, and it, it's, um, it's not using the latest like ultra low power uh, Haswell. So I think there's scope for making that thinner and lighter. The 14 and 15 I think are a little bit heavy. The yeah. 15 works well on a desktop and can be what I call a table tablet. Yeah. So you can get that digitization yeah, start heavy you can lift me, the back yeah. up and really yeah. start working. The 13 inch I think is a good, uh, good compromise and um, I'm, I'll be interested to see uh, how much that's going to cost when it comes yeah. out because I don't think we have pricing on that yet. So what kind of devices are you using right now? What, um, what's your favorite oh, board? I, I get some, some news on that. Oh. So I, for this, because you know, are the I, news. No, I, I, you know I always do. Every time I go to an event, I try out like a, an ultra, what I call an ultra mobile re reporting kit. Yeah. This is number 12. Yeah. So that shows you how many times I've re redone this. And what I'm trying to do this week is go without mains cables. Mm. And so far, day one, day zero and day one of IFA, I haven't had a mains cable with me and I mm. haven't had to charge anything. Wow. Now, that's, there's, there's two, two, bits, two bits to the kit. There's the, the phone, and I've got uh, Lumia 925 here, which has replaced my Nokia 808 as a sort of casual camera, um, but has also added, because the 808 was so terrible at internet and web and social, it's added that for me. But now that's lasting a day on one charge. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going down to um, power saving mode at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, mm. okay, but then it's lasting till, till midnight. It lasted me till, till midnight last night. So that's, that's the smartphone. But the thing that's really changed for me is the, uh, the laptop. And I'm, I've been given a, a, an Ultrabook from Intel on, based that's on Haswell. That's the developer's edition, right? This is the software developer's kit. It's a bit of hardware and it actually looks really, really nice. I don't know if you can let me zoom just, in let me on just that. Hold but it for it's, you. Uh, so this is actually uh, an Ultrabook that you can't buy at all. Right? Yeah. So you need to be uh, in the Intel's developers program to get this one. Um, what it really strikes my eyes wide away is this amazing keyboard, right? Yeah, it, it's, it, 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 for a software development kit, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it looks good, it feels good, everything works. It's got a great screen on it. But it's the battery life that's the real killer here. You've got, well, let's just say back on Ivy Bridge, it was good but you would be out of uh, power in about three or four hours if you're doing what we do, right? Which is uh, writing, video editing, social, and actually just leaving a device on while you chat to people and talk, yeah? Like you're yeah. doing now. That would be like, I, I'm managing to get through the day without switching this off. Now that means I'm doing about six hours screen time, screen on time, and then the rest of it is connected standby. Yeah. I don't know, we should probably explain what connected standby is, right? It's Basically, when you close the lid of your Ultrabook, Windows desktop turns off. But Windows 8, in the background, carries on working. And this is a part of Windows 8 not many people have seen and yeah. experienced yet, right? Yeah. And it's a bit that I think that needs more um, airtime. It needs to be marketed a bit better. So this, this Ultrabook is still on. It's connected to the Wi-Fi here, and it's picking up tweets or emails or exactly. location, whatever. So it's still, and it never switches off, which also means that when you lift the lid, it's there, it's on. Yeah, yeah. So that's connected standby. It can actually, you can actually stream music, close the lid, or hit the power button, yeah, and it carries yeah, on. So that's yeah. connected standby. So that's why it's never been off. And, and 13 hours is, is, that's unbelievable, right? That's, yeah. And this way is 1.4 kilos. Mm. So that, that's what I'm using, using here. And that's what I'll be using for a long time, I'm sure. What about the other device over there? Oh, so I picked up a couple of, devices that we can talk about. The, the first one, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, which is the Clover Trail. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that. We can use that to talk about Bay Trail. Yeah. This is the, uh, the Vio Pro, right? That's the 13-inch version 13 of it. 13-inch version. The 11-inch is going to be my next, my next, my next uh, artwork. Really? Yeah. yeah. This is the one that uh, uh, Ben Saunders is taking to the South Pole, right? Yeah. Uh, were you here when he, you interviewed yeah. him, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Or you? You were here when, when he was being interviewed. Um, so, uh, ben and the Scott Expedition, uh, Intel are sponsoring them. Intel basically has said, okay, this is, this is the one you need. And so he's going to take this for four months 
without any mains, of course, he's on the freaking South Pole, and uh, they'll be powering it by solar panels. Yeah. So uh, that gives you an idea of the sort of efficiency that uh, these devices have. He's, he's done this in the past with uh, previous generations, as he said, and he says, and he agrees with me, the difference in battery life between the fourth gen core and the third gen core oh, is, absolutely. is amazing, right? We're talking about like 40% or so, yeah. right? It depends and what scenario you're in. I mean, in some cases, video watching 50%. Uh, Plus, on top of it, like a 25 to 30 percent performance gain on the CPU and a huge performance gain on the GPU side, right? Are you depending? Or, or again, you it use the scenario. Depend. Yeah, 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 depend. Yeah. No, it depends on which GPU you have, because actually, with, with the that's four a 4400 or 4600. In yeah, there. that's a four. Series. Not the 5000. Yeah, so you get the 400, the 4000 series, and the 5000 series, yeah. and then you get the top. Uh, the Iris, Intel Iris graphics, yeah. which you get on that uh, Asus ZenBook Infinity, right? Exactly. Which yeah. no yeah. one's been able to quite test yet. I think there's one on the interview. We, we, we've had one here yesterday. Did you? Oh, why didn't you tell me? We could have done some tests. <laughs> 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 no one's actually managed to test the uh, Iris uh, graphics yet, but uh, that's the high end. That's actually a higher TDP part as well, so um, it'd be a slightly thicker devices with that with slightly lower battery life, but potentially a bit of mobile gaming, mobile PC gaming, which is pretty good. Yeah, so that, I mean, and how much does that weigh? I think that's about 1.2 kilos. It's super, I think it's 1.2. Right? The 11 inches is 870 grams. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Well, I mean, once again, I have to admit, I'm just a Sony fan, but you know that I'm using Vio yeah. Z's for uh, four years right now, and they were just insanely expensive at that time. Yeah. Um, but now with the Pro, even the prices went down so radically. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm getting a real premium product here, right? This is fast, this is a design statement, the build quality is absolutely fantastic. Um, it has great battery life. I'm just getting the 11-inch uh, one uh, with the additional battery uh, underneath, so I will end up at like 12 or 13 hours you'll of be battery good to life. for right? a whole day without, yeah, without yeah, mains. Yeah, and that's exactly what I need. And you'll um, be able to do your video editing as well yes, on there? Yes, I can use the Quick Sync yep. uh, from Intel, which is such a huge advantage yeah, over yeah. any other platform that is out there. Absolutely. And especially also any other operating system. That, that's why I'm using Windows, right? So I can use Quick Sync for video editing. Yeah, we had, we had a guy in here uh, yesterday. Um, he's a journalist, I'd say an old school journalist, but he's doing some video stuff. And um, he was asking me, you know, what's the best Ultrabook for, for video editing and rendering? Mm. I said, well, what are you doing? Are you doing 1080p? How long are your videos? And he said, I'm doing half hour videos, 1080p. I'm saying, I said, well, how long does it take you to render them out? Thinking he'd say about an hour. Mm. Six hours he's taking to render out his videos. Holy shit. I said, are you serious? Six hours? He says, yeah, I What's usually do it at night. I go to bed. And are then in the morning, it's ready. And they're three hours long. <laughs> no, they're 30 right. minutes long. Yeah. So we set up a demo uh, yesterday. I had a six minute uh, video, which rendered out, we rendered it up from 720p to 1080p. Mm -hmm. So we upscaled it and it rendered out in 55 seconds for a yeah. six minute video. So it was 6x real time. And he was taking um, 12x longer than real time. So we were about, I don't know, I can't do the maths in my head, 30x faster. Yeah. He's like, Oh, it looks like I need to get an Ultrabook. <laughs> did, did you have breakfast? No, I didn't have breakfast. I've just ordered something. We're making yeah. a little breakfast Co session out of this. Yeah. Nic Nicole is uh, preparing a plate for us. Currywurst. I'm so... Well, you know, that, currywurst. Uh, not a currywurst. <laughs> no, some, 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 some buns and... Uh. So, I, can I ask you a question? How's the blogging going? How's everything going with Mobile Geeks? And you've expanded. Now you've got coverage of bloody everything now. When we started, it was... Well, you were doing netbooks, right? I was doing that. Well, before I was just doing well, mini ITX, right? Yeah, yeah. And embedded PCs for well, since 2000. We started EPS Center, I think, in 2001 or 2002. Geez, so that, that's like got them 11 years ago. Mm. Holy crap. That's how old I am. And now you're. Oh, fantastic. And look, I like the uh, serving tray. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. It's like an 1100 Thank euro you. serving tray. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's for you. I'll take this. <laughs> that's the that's the new one, right? The Yoda. Yoda, Yoda yeah, try it out. Pro. Talk about it. <laughs> Hold on well, a second. I'm having, I'm having first world problems, Steve. All of my backgrounds that I love are not high resolution enough. For this oh, because this is a 3200 by 1800 screen, right? Yeah. Uh, which, if you don't adjust the font sizes on Windows, is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> 
But compared to the Yoga 13, which, which we were talking no, you've got the 11 there, but mm -hmm. the, this is now the same weight, I believe, or just a little bit more than the Yoga 11. So mm -hmm. we t I think they shaved 20% off the weight. Mm -hmm. We've got a Haswell up to Core i7 inside here, and it's so much thinner than so the 13. And like they've, they've done like huge improvements to it. Like um, I was having problems with the trackpad, and like I often walk and render. So like the cool thing was is that like on the, on the 13, mm. uh, if you held it at the bottom, the trackpad would kind of bow on one side or come to the top. On this one, it's still clickable, right. even like even yeah. even with my hands. So like they've they've really like reinforced the plastic on the bottom. Yeah. And then there's like even like a styling now where like it's kind of angled. Yeah. So like it's, it's, there's it's incredibly thin at the front. Yeah, isn't it? like there's there's gonna be much like less slipping when you have it in tent mode because they've kind of got like a rubberized plastic there, so it's like a little more it can dig in a yeah. little better. There, there isn't a digitizer yeah. on this one, is there? No. No. Okay, that would be the ultimate. Mm. And um, have, you, have you tried the keyboard yet? It's, it's ThinkPad quality. Yeah. They've actually improved Say no more. It. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, they've, they've totally improved it from the, from the 13. Like, it's, it's actually, I don't, wait. Oh, when it's backlit. But wait, bring the microphone down here. Oh, that's Ooh, really nice. It sounds listen nice. Listen to that. That's, and even <laughs> without nails? Oh, without yeah. nails. <laughs> <laughs> So that, I mean, that's exactly like, we were just talking about the, uh, the Vio, um, sorry, the, uh, the Pro, Vio Pro. And that's another example of how, you know, how much, it's a 20% it's all around, 20% up on the CPU, 20% less on the weight, 20% less on the, on the, on the, are you right there? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Chippy for mobilegeeks.com, dot de. Well, Sasha has his breakfast. Just I'm so hungry, I tell you that. So, so Steve needs to get another bun. <laughs> <laughs> but wait till he's finished, otherwise we'll have, we'll have nothing to talk about. Um, you're using PowerDirector as well, right? I am using PowerDirector on the show floor. Yeah, yeah. and they, uh, so CyberLink just came out with PowerDirector 12 yeah. here at the show. Um, I need to test that. Have you tested it yet? Well, Roland put it onto his yoga, and so I was taking a look at it there. There's, uh, well, the obvious difference is there's like a little, there's, there's drop downs on, on all of the, um, on all of the, video clips now and uh, so I was clicking through and I'm like why is it presenting me with all of this information <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes hard the upgrades uh, the UI changes slow yeah. you down slightly right yeah but um, internally I pres presume it's a bit faster they're supporting a lot faster so when I, I I was exporting a five minute HD video clip and it did it in like a minute 25 yeah. Uh, 1080p. 1080p, yeah. yeah. 1080p. So five times faster than real time. Yeah, t 1080p, 13 bit. Right. Yeah, that's I mean, that's incredible, right? <laughs> so I don't think there's another platform that can do it that fast. And and I've tried them all, you know. I even tried the iPad. I thought that could be a nice 720p rendering, video editing, and render just for what we do here. Just throw it out up to YouTube. But uh, there was nothing that's beating the uh, Ultrabook. Thanks for your uh, service. Well, thank you. Yeah, that no was problem. fantastic. Yeah. And Steve, I haven't eaten my, Steve, your, stole my breakfast. Yours was fantastic too. <laughs> Well, you should to, to talk to Nicole. I just, um... Oh, you know. I, might, I might get distracted with my new Ultrabook. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so you were telling me about... Uh, <laughs> I'm interviewing you now. <laughs> How's that chair, by the way? Is that feeling steady? It yeah, is. You sure? <laughs> they're, they're laughing because I remember last time, the last video. Do you remember the the the, the chair? Oh my God! We need to we, we need to bring up this video again today. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I, need, I need to find that one. That was the good one. During Seabit, that was the classic slapstick move. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but, I'm, I, I, when I look at it, I'm embarrassed how much I laugh because you really couldn't yeah. hurt yourself. <laughs> You fell into this uh, a box was hiding all the electrics, right? Yeah. You had an orange juice in your hand. Yeah. And the orange juice went and all over you and then all yeah, the electrics yeah, were on the yeah. I was like, well, it could have been nasty. And there I would have been laughing my head off as you fry. <laughs> I would have done the same, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> the blogging is, blogging is doing good. Mobile Geeks is now about a year old. And um, we're actually going to relaunch the site this month. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Completely new redesign. We're going... We're going flat. Really? Okay. We are a little bit inspired by Windows 8. By Windows 8. Yes. Yeah, seriously, it's a surprising amount of people that are just slimming down everything and get, getting rid of all those reflections and just making it simple looking, right? In general, we're going to change the whole concept yeah. in terms of in terms of blogging. I mean, um, we changed it already a little bit, like 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 six, seven weeks ago. 
where we try to kind of wrap up news and like uh, this kind of have a morning news roundup, have sure. a, uh, a, mu a news roundup for lunch. But we're going to change this again back to the old news ticker style. But um, this can only work, in my opinion, on the new theme that we're using on the new template and design. Right. Um, so it will be, first of all, we will have like a three-column design. Um, the left will be our all our reviews, our unique content, special comments, all of this, how-tos, whatnot. Yeah. Uh, the middle column will be just kind of fetching our YouTube videos because I mean okay. that that's, that's a big content channel big part for of us. Business, yeah. And and the right uh, on the right uh, column side, uh, we will just have a news ticker. Really? So, so news on the right. That's, yeah, yeah. That's going to look original. Yeah. Unique content first, video second, and then news. this goddamn boring news, right? Phone X Y Z comes out in color yeah. red or yeah, green, yeah, and this. Yeah. but the stuff that you still need to cover because a lot of people want to know what's going on. Yeah, right? you need to. But have for me, from from, from, coverage, from right? the perspective of uh, that I have on blogging and uh, how I want to create content, it is just so goddamn boring. And if I'm going to do this another year, I'm, I will be burnt out. I, yeah. I just can't deal with it anymore. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking to Robert Barzic uh, a couple of days ago about the the blogging machine. Yeah, that's happening now. At, at that's the, at it's the a events. machine. Um, and it's really, it was a bit of a race to the, the bottom in terms of like, who can be the quickest, who can just, yeah, yeah who can do it for the cheapest, yeah. Um, I, I can't be part of that because you need a massive team to, to do that and do it yeah. properly, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I have a little bit of step back for that. I remember the, the days where it was easier to just to get to the front of the queue and get a product video and up on YouTube before, you know, the, the main press came along with their yeah. paper and pen. That's over. Yeah, but that's over now. That's, that's over. That's Each and every mainstream media right now has, has a huge tech office, right? And um, it's kind of hard to compete with them on this level. Yeah. So what you have to do is you just need to win all the experience that you have with this, all the context to the industry, and what you're doing in general, and of course your personality, yeah. right? And your subjectivity yeah, yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a very biased angle that we sometimes have, yeah, right? yeah. which is good, right? Yeah, it's, it's good actually being, yeah, so having your own opinion and sticking by it is, yeah. uh, is, is, is honesty, so, yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to say, because you're on techladders.de, there's probably a lot of guys from Germany listening. Yeah. I, was, I wasn't at CES this year, and I, and I followed it. And, and I was tracking the news as it comes through. You guys in Germany are really hitting the YouTube hard. You're doing it really well, quicker yeah. than any other yeah. country, I believe. Yeah. And, and, and that includes the US. Yeah. W w why is Germany so damn good at doing all this coverage of events and getting the YouTube videos? Because you were one of the first guys to do it right. They've just had. Um, they've, they've just learned from the best. Yeah. <laughs> just to, just to give you a give you that on a plate, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, why, why do the guys in Germany get so good at it? I think the tech blogging scene in Germany just kind of ex exploded, and especially in the last two or three years, right? We have so many new tech blogs coming up over here, and also tech blogs that are getting, the way they're getting managed is just so professional right now. Yeah. Um, huge, distrib huge publishers were buying into, into tech blogs, so we have these um, the Tech Hive guys, right? Which is an IDG project. Yeah. We have now Tech Stage, which is a Heiser project. Look at the Giga guys, right? How big yeah. They have huge, all these guys have huge investors' money mm. behind them. And um, it was almost like until the Germans saw that there was a business model there, they didn't yeah. do it. And then when there was yeah. a business yeah. model, yeah. Boom, they went in big time. It was just really too stupid to constantly have presentations about how much money <laughs> I'm making with Gave all the secrets yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> well, which, which, is, which is okay. I think this is also very, very important to. Um, well, it's, it's one of the reasons you're sitting here now in front of cameras. People want to hear what you've got to say. You know? you, I think uh, so. You're, you're prepared to, and, and I've, I've seen you speak, and you, you do, you, you uh, give that passion out. People believe in what, you're, you're, what you say, yeah. and they go and do it, and then, yeah, it's kind of a well, good formula. I've had speeches about the culture of sharing, right? Yeah. And I think it's very, very important because my background is open source. I think sometimes you just have to give something back to the community. Uh, because I'm also part of the community, and with all this community, I, community, I would have never had the chance to do this job or to, do, yeah. or to live this life. And, and, and then therefore, it... it, it it's somehow all about the community. Of course, there's competition. There's even competition between Akashi and me, right? 
and there was even competition between all of us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's funny but, 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 but how we, 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 we were working together, that was, right? That was something very unique, wasn't it? We, we would, we're all competing against each other yeah. when it comes to press events, and then yeah. we sit down, we sit down in a, a blogger lounge afterwards, and we're, we're talking, swapping all the inside information, exactly. all the contacts, and all sharing. the news, and yeah. sharing. And, uh, and, it, and it helps, it really helps. You know, you, you, there wasn't, I don't see many businesses that compete at that level and then share at that no. level, right? Well, you can't do this with mainstream media. No, That's no, not no, going to no, work no, out. No, no one would ever do this. No. Right? You could never expect from someone from Focus sharing any kind of uh, NDA embargo yeah. pictures and specifications for, with someone from their Spiegel. Yeah. Yeah. First thing I, 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 I did on, what was it, on Monday or on, on Tuesday, I went to the press room, the notebook info guys were, were there, so I gave them each and every picture that I took from Galaxy Smart, uh, Galaxy Gear Smartwatch, from the Note uh, yeah. 3, all the specifications, everything. I've met a guy who was constantly interviewing me, calling me, he's from Associate Press. Uh, and so I said, he, okay, here's a USB stick, he, there you have all your information, you can prepare yeah. it already, right? Yeah. But just make sure uh, the embargo is until whatever, yeah. 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., right? Yeah. Just to make sure to prepare everything. No, you would never ever get anything like this from the mainstream media. You mm. won't see this interaction in between different media outlets uh, and mainstream yeah. media. And I think that, well, for me, it's common sense somehow, right? Just come on, just support, support yeah. each other. At the end of the day, we're sitting in the same boat, right? Yeah, and yeah that's true. I used to be, um, I used to work in London, there used to be a pub um, off Fleet Street um, where they all used to drink of an evening. It's yeah. that, that broke down the barriers somehow, you know, a few, yeah. a few beers they got together and, uh, and, uh, and if you go back to um, war journalism, because those guys were all in it together, they, they spent their lives oh, together yeah, as well, so there was a lot of that going on. Yep. But uh, in this mainstream, old school stuff, no. uh, I don't see it happening no. at all. Is it happening at all? And it's, it's, it's kind of funny how the mainstream media adopted blogging style, right? So they're all doing their live blogs right now. Oh, they God. all have to do their hands-ons. They all have to do their kind of They all have to do their top just, five or their five ways exactly. or the five reasons exactly. and have the question mark at the end of the yeah. title. Yeah, and, yeah, oh, they've yeah. taken on a lot from, from, from yeah, blogging. Yeah. I mean, even people, also, people the, like the, the BBC. The tone they're setting is yeah. just way more casual right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. The BBC and The Guardian. Uh, just two examples from, from the UK. I think the Guardian are do, doing great stuff. But really Guardian, Jack Schofield and his crew, they're doing an absolutely amazing job. In, in my opinion, one of the best tech media outlets that, absolutely. You, from, that, that you can imagine. Well, the Guardian is, is an amazing magazine anyways. Yeah, I have to plug their media podcast as well. That's, yeah. that's really good. That's, I think, better than the BBC's, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, that's a statement. <laughs> you're at IDF next week, right? Yeah, I am. Flying out on Monday morning. <laughs> See you there. Yeah. What, know. Are you, what are you expecting? Um, mobile, <laughs> mobile, and a little bit of mobile. I would, I wouldn't expect a lot on the ultra book side. Mm. They will, they will weigh in on mobile and pay trail and you know next generation yeah. of Atom. We well, because they have to. Yeah. <laughs> Bait. We, we can say that Bait was was really a success story so far. <laughs> So, uh, um, yeah, Intel Developer Forum, just in case anyone didn't know what IDF was. I think you're right. I think I looked through the keynotes. It's all mobile. It's all about first keynote for the new CEO. What he's, this is his oh, first keynote. Oh, exactly. We have a new Intel CEO. Brian Krasnich. Yeah. I think his name it's going to be interesting. Looking be forward really to this. Really interesting. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see if he does something new or whether he just takes all the building blocks that have been put there over the last five years and, and rearranges them and says, right, this is now what's going to happen. I think there's a lot of building blocks there ready to be used by Intel, yeah. right? And with this fresh new CEO, he could represent it in a very nice way and, and the media could yeah. then have a different opinion on that. But yeah, I think Bay Trail will be huge. I've, I'm interested um, to see how much they talk about on the server and cloud side. I mm -hmm. think that is also still a big part of their business, but I, I believe you're right. Ultrabooks, there'll be less talk about Ultrabooks. It'll be more about two-in-ones, right? Tablets and smartphones. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we want to get some huge announcements over there. A little bird told me. Uh, maybe I had a little uh, bird. There is a Taiwanese manufacturer over there that I really like. 
<laughs> right, okay. Is, is it a phone? Is it a tab? <laughs> oh, oh well, that's funny because they start with the first letter of the alphabet. There's another one that starts with the first letter of the alphabet mm -hmm. that will also, a little bird told me, maybe uh, will possibly be. showing something at uh, IDF. Institute. I expect some announcements <laughs> uh, for the tablet and smartphone category, Intel and Taiwanese premium OEMs. Yeah. And these announcements should be quite big. Um, is day zero, day one of the key, of the IDF, uh, the same as the Apple event? Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how what the, what happens with the with the press, what happens with the media. Okay, output. here's the thing: what should happen with the Apple event? It's not, all leaked. Yeah, Jesus, not an iWatch. Let's, 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 let's get it right. We know about the iPhone 5s. We know about the iPhone 5c. The only thing that is missing here: what's the price point? Yeah. Well, it's going to be available. Okay, by the end of September. I got that. So what's the next big thing? It will look the same. It, it, it will feel the same. Oh, yeah, wait. They have iOS 7 on there. Ooh, yeah. big deal. Yeah, this could be a good opportunity, just, uh, actually, for, yeah, for, for those OEMs at Intel to really uh, shine through. We'll see. Well, well, let's face it. There will be an Apple iPhone tsunami next Tuesday, right? Right. That's, that's, that, that that's is day tenth. one. Yeah. Um, that would be the iPhone tsunami. And um, <laughs> what do you do when there's an iPhone tsunami as a blogger? We have to do a live blog about this. It's huge. You have traffic. to go with it, right? It sweeps you with it. We have like five no or choice. six thousand people on the live blog yeah. during an Apple iPhone launch. It's insane. I really wish yeah. Apple would do an Ultra book. Oh, they yeah. did MacBook Air. <laughs> I, I, I really wish they would use a proper operating system for it. <laughs> Wonderful. You've got chat, live chat going with this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh At this God. moment, there'll be a few comments for you. Um, <laughs> now, in, 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 in general, I'm. The whole market became so predictable. Uh, what was the big surprise this year? I think one of the big surprises was during CS at the NVIDIA keynote that they pulled out this uh, NVIDIA Shield. Yeah. No one was expecting a gaming console from NVIDIA, right? Running on Android. So the, no one knew anything about this. That was one of the best kept secrets in the tech industry in the last decade. I'm not kidding. Right? Anything else is getting leaked. Yeah. Right? Since everybody is mass producing at five or six different ODMs somewhere in China, or, um, it's getting leaked because they also had, they're still not getting uh, this this mainland Chinese mentality yeah. that, that those guys are just uh, changing their jobs every six or 12 months. Right. Right. And the cons, and, you know, if you have a couple of hundred thousand workers working on this, right, forget about this and you can keep this as a secret. You yeah. can still have your secret Apple Cupertino police in there, right? Yeah. But it, these days, we're kicking in the doors of a, of a blogger from Gizmodo because he had one of these phones. There's no, those days are over. There's no more and one And you can't one do this anymore. Thing, right? Thank God yeah. um, that Steve Jobs is not in control of this anymore. Sorry sorry he, about he, that, but, but don't blame me. This, this, he, I don't want to be... have a fit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, no, no, it, it seems to me they're becoming a, a, um, a normal company that I can respect again because that was, that was complete, like... Stasi secret service method at that at that time. <laughs> no Insane. <laughs> no comment. Seriously. But uh, we'll go back to his seven inch. Raiding comment. a house of a journalist, that. right? Just uh, what the? I mean, okay, but this would, would be something that you would expect from the NSA, right? That's what <laughs> these guys are doing, or the British secret service. Um, everything became so predictable. Everything is getting leaked. Maybe we're also losing a little bit. This this this. The, the magic of the moment. Yeah, and we're all, we also have to be careful that we're inside the bubble, outside, you know, outside our media bubble. Yeah. Some of it doesn't actually leak. You know, mainstream, we're talking about mainstream consumer buyers, yeah? Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of them now. Some of them don't know that there's a Surface, Microsoft Surface out there, you know? Yeah. Most of them don't. Uh, most of them don't know what an Ultrabook is. Um, yeah. And most of them, uh, probably don't even know there's an iPad Mini out there, but of course, I don't know, none of them will know that there's an iPhone 5S coming or a 5C coming. Yeah. So, we're putting a better perspective on it. Yeah, it, there's still this uh, secrecy that's still kind of working, right? I mean, there'll, yeah. there'll be, still be people reading their paper on, on, on the 11th going, holy crap, 5C, yeah. that's brilliant, it's a cheap iPhone, you know? So, 
we've got to put it into perspective. We hear all the news. You make all the news, but... The, five, the 5C is quite, quite interesting. It's actually the first iPhone I'm going to buy for myself. I'm right? not interested, sorry. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not really interested in this, right? but I need to... I need to have a proper device to see how iOS 7 and the future generation right. works on a phone where we sure. have all the iPads. But um, it's quite interesting. It's, it, it tells you a little bit about the hypocrisy of Apple. Because I remember a time where, they were, where, where Steve Jobs or uh, Tim Cook were on the analyst calls. And whenever an analyst would, we were asking uh, one of them, um, so, but w what about this huge momentum of Android device? And they were constantly saying, yes, yeah, because they're building this cheap plastic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's what everybody was. They're, they're doing exactly the same. In general, when you're looking at what Apple did in the last three years, um, after the iPad, after the first generation of the iPad, was just kind of following the trend and, 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 and the, the pace that Android was setting it into the market. Right. So right now, they're finally adopting this idea of having an entry-level device. They adopted this idea of having a 7-inch category sure. device. Right? They yeah. adopted the complete idea of Android and even Windows Phone uh, with iOS 7. Right? Yeah. That's a mashup of, of Android and, uh, on, yeah. and Windows Phone. Look, th th it actually brings me to the one device I wanted to just quickly mention. I think we've only got a couple of minutes left, right? Mm -hmm. There's three big companies that have finally have to give to give in in terms of pricing and, and like consumer level stuff, right? Microsoft have had to chop uh, and rechange the way they license Windows for tablets, right? Look at this Ace uh, Toshiba Encore, right? 299 with Windows 8 and plus Office. That's a bay trail. And that's a, probably a bay trail, yeah, they don't say it is, but it's, it's probably a bay it's trail. It's a bay trail, they've been here. And, it, and it's Intel Atom inside as well. So, so both Intel and Microsoft have, ha have had to, okay, give, almost give in. And with the iPad mini and now with the I iPhone 5C, they're giving in as well. And they're, they're, lo they're saying, okay, now we play with the rest of them because that's the way you it's going. You need right? to. Yeah. But what we have to keep in mind, there's a, there's a different world outside of Europe and outside of North America, right? Yeah. These are not the main markets anymore for your next generation of devices. These are not the most important markets anymore in terms of um, sales in general, right? This is all about mainland China. Yeah. This is all about India. This is about how we're going to connect the next billion. Yeah. Uh, and, this is also a theme that the industry is talking about like for almost 10 years, right? And how are we getting the next uh, 1 yeah. billion people connected? And when you, when, you, when you look at... I talked to Lenovo guys yesterday. Lenovo has 53 different handsets in the Chinese market. 53? 53. 53 different handsets in China from <laughs> Lenovo. Wow. Just to give you a perspective on this. And then we're on top of it, we're talking about, I would guess, roughly about 100,000, 200,000 different Android smartphones. Different, not the same ones, right? I'm talking about different ones. So I'm not you know, how, how 100, 100 or 200,000. 200,000. These are in five zeros in China. In the market. All, in the market from all these different weird, small, little manufacturers. Right? Just go to Alibaba.com, search for a smartphone. They're, they're roughly 200,000, 300,000 different tablets, and that was already like two or three years ago. It's a completely different, but highly fragmented. Yeah, This isn't you have like two or three premium OEMs, which is of course um, Lenovo, then you have U uh, Huawei and ZTE, mm -hmm. then you have the, 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 the new kids on the block like Xiaomi now uh, coming up. Like, I mean, come on, they just hired Hugo Barras yeah. from, 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 from Android. There's a reason for this. Yeah. These guys are building amazing phones. We have, a, we have a Xiaomi M2 in Taiwan. It costs 250 euros. It's uh, a 720p or 720p 4.3 inch display, Qualcomm Snapdragon 600, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, 250 euros, and has this kind of MIUI uh, Android, which looks like an iPhone. Right. right. Uh, perfect build quality, amazing specifications, 250 it's, it's euros. Good, it's good for us. It just means that pricing is going to come down yeah. Uh, yeah. for us as well. Because the these the guys will go to the Western markets. Oh, right? yeah, they're all Once here. again, you, you see more and more. Um, not so well-known brand from China becoming premium OEMs. They're evolving, right? They, they, there's brand building happening over there. Companies are getting bought uh, right at this moment, right? And that's why you still have this fragmentation because 
these guys, these entrepreneurs, they still think they can they can become the next Lenovo, the next Huawei, the next ZTE, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's just so dynamic and crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, Once hungry. again, I'm talking about a hundred or two hundred thousand not smartphones, but different Android smartphones. Easily, it might be already like half a million or so. It is just so insane. You can you you can buy. You can buy a proper 5-inch 1080p quad-core Android smartphone running the latest Android Jelly Bean 4.3 for $99. <laughs> okay, I'm coming yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> and you know Take what? me to the and shops and when we come not, to Computex. It's not even crappy. Yeah. It's a fantastic device. Remember the first uh, cheap Android? No, no. They weren't even cheap, the tablets, like three or four years ago. They were like three, four hundred dollars yeah. Android tablets, which, which then was was che comparatively cheap to, to the iPad yeah. cheap. Yeah, yeah. But you had you had three of them of the same product line, and you could definitely tell the difference because they were all handmade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look crappy, <laughs> and now they're building absolutely amazing devices. Uh, it just and and that's and that's the problem uh, for all these traditional Western companies and manufacturers. You can't compete with this Chinese ecosystem. The next one will be the Indian ecosystem. And sooner or later, we will have an African ecosystem mm. where you can't compete with. Right? China evolved already in the last three years that a lot of ODMs are starting to move over to South uh, America. Brazil is, yeah, is Brazil their next is hunting huge. ground. Yeah. Foxconn yeah. is already yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But India will be also another one. That's just, it's just so mind-blowing and horizon expanding to see what is going on over there and how these guys are into tech. Right? Yeah. And, and what is also, what kind of impact it has on the global market. I mean, think about China. In China, Android has a market share of 94%. Right? That's the biggest smartphone market in the world. Um, but when you also see what is happening in Latin America and South America, Windows Phone is yeah. the no, number two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The company, uh, companies, countries like Colombia, Windows Phone is a market share of 25%. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So stuff is happening outside of our halo, yeah. which is completely different. It has nothing to do anymore. And you know what? The interesting thing about this is they are not following any Western trend. They, don't, they give a shit about this, what we are doing over here. They still might want to watch the latest Hollywood movie, right? But they don't care anymore what kind of cars. But, well, maybe cars. Maybe German cars and clothes. And <laughs> yeah, and clothes. No, even clothes, even fashion is, is just completely different in Asia. I think I think that the the, the Western mar the fashion world and the Western markets is getting more influenced by the Asian fashion and what is coming up over there in Japan and and uh, uh, Korea and, um, and and even China um, than than vice uh, than the other way around and vice versa. So um, they just, in terms of technology, they just don't care about what we are doing here. That even even the iPhone, it, it, it's not like that. People are only buying these super crappy phones in China, right? They they also have Samsung as a market share of I don't know, right? Like like fifteen or twenty percent, China. So people buying these S fours and notes, they just don't care about Apple. <laughs> <laughs> so and they couldn't get it. So there's a reason for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. It's not even. It's not this. Not this. Not the symbol, the status symbol at all. I think they're looking at it also in a different way. A phone is not really the status symbol. Yeah. It is. It, we want to have a great device. We want to have. Um, this is why the the, the, the the phablets. I was reading a couple of days ago. The market share of the phablets in in Asia is huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're really yeah. taking to yeah. the larger yeah. screen, up to seven inches yeah. as a phone. Yeah. yeah. I see. Um, when I'm, when I'm walking through the computer markets in Taipei, um, I'm constantly trying to spot what's happening on the accessory market. Right. Because it gives you an idea about which what? platforms are really popular. Yeah, yeah. So, Samsung Mega, the Galaxy Mega 6.3 came out. Yeah. Yeah. One week later, you could buy already 50 different sleeves and cases. Right. And, and then I'm going to the, uh, on through the MRT and I see all these girls having a Mega or a Galaxy Note or now the Z Ultra is another big thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, they just That's they don't care about 7-inch, right? But anything that comes in between 5 and 6.5-inch, and inch, it's a kind of sweet spot, especially for girls. So they have this in their purse 
Uh, they have amazing cases or sleeves for it with Hello Kitty and Swarovski crystals and whatnot. <laughs> and they're using the stylus. Oh, they're using the yeah, stylus as well. They're using the stylus. And they, well, obviously, of course, for their first sign language. And, um, but also just to doodle and scribble and all of this. So it's quite interesting. It's a different user scenario. Yeah, totally. Uh, totally. And, um, you're getting on an MRT train, I uh, trust me. 90 to 95 percent of the people are having a smartphone or tablet or a tablet in their hands and, and just using it. Really, it's the, uh, Taiwan has the highest penetration of smartphones in the world. We are right now, I think, at 83 or 84 percent of smartphone penetration. Yep. So there's not much left anymore for the feature phone world. That's but true. that's just it is just amazing to see how people are embracing technology over there. And once again, it is this. This tells you that we kind of, um, I think, because of it was a matter of ignorance and arrogance also, that we, 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 we lost the edge in the Western world in terms of technology. We don't have this leadership anymore. It's all gone. In terms of uh, design, you mean? Industrial design or...? What well, even in terms of industrial design, we just make we we might gonna make uh, use some different materials, right? And w w we have a different price point, and due to the different premium price point, we we we're trying to position it as uh, uh, the non plus ultra of industrial design. Right. We're trying to sell the design over the price point. Design needs to be expensive. Yeah. Right. Design was always expensive. Because I, yeah, I think. Oh my God! Well, these I, are designer clothes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what? So I think I think Don't in the think Western world, the other we, guys are not designing <laughs> clothes. Right? Just, we still have some qualities here. There's some yeah. si silicon engineering that goes on here. Some component engineering. You know, the the science that then goes over there into production. Still well, absolutely. a lot, I think, in the rest of okay, the world. Okay, but when, when, when you're looking at, a, at one of these smartphones uh, for $99, we're talking about Chinese displays, we're talking about Chinese SOCs in there, whether it's a rock ship or maybe it's a, it's a Taiwanese MediaTek uh, SOC. Mm. Right? They're not using anything from the Western world anymore. They're maybe they're licensing. Well, I think this uh, um, uh, but, 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 but on top of it, they're developing. Yeah, but I think, the, I mean, like I say, I still think a lot of the science happens in the Western world. A classic example is solar technology, which Germany was at the forefront of developing in terms of science, right? Yeah. Now, China has taken all that science and yeah. is mass producing it. So, uh, you know, let's give some uh, props to the Western world. <laughs> I don't want to let you knock no, the Western well, world. No, once again, I said it, it's not like the, the, that we're having this anymore, but we, we lost this edge. Right. And we don't have this leadership anymore, right? because there's more and more stuff coming out from China and mm. coming out from Southeast Asia, where they're just developing. I mean, how hardware is evolving, and how hardware incubators and entrepreneurship is happening. This is happening in China right now. It's also happening in in, in Korea, Japan, and and Taiwan, uh, Taiwan well, yeah. and yeah. Singapore. Yeah. Huge inv investors community in Singapore yeah. setting up incubators all over the place. Uh, where I think, I said, oh, why is no one investing into hardware? The next big thing won't be software. What are you expecting from software? It's always it always starts with hardware. Well, you need to build the car first because before you can go to the gas station, put some fuel in there. And that's that. that that's uh, I think a, a pretty good analogy uh, analogy for hardware and software. It yeah. starts it starts with the basics, and that's the hardware. And when you when your design is evolving, when your scenario is evolving, then then software will also evolve on top of it. Because seriously, I'm sick and tired of all this of all this software. I I I'm thinking of building an app hipster blah blah bullshit investor scene. <laughs> especially over, especially over here in Berlin, you have this huge hipster bullshit that is going on, and they think they're they're they're, they're the fucking top of the league here. There's nothing coming out of Berlin in terms of software startups. We have SoundCloud, and the rest of it is bullshit. Have you heard of this Amon thing that they sold to Tape TV? No. Ash Ashton Kutcher was uh, in, uh, invested into this. This was an app that no one ever else used outside of the Berlin Berlin bubble, but they but but they've been pushing it on TechCrunch like every two or three weeks. It was basically about recommendation of locations and whatnot. I said, oh wow, that's something new. I've never yeah. did this before, and I sold it for I don't know. They got I don't know how many millions they burned with this shit. The same was with, with Wunderlist, a Tasklist. Seriously, Tasklist. Hey, I use Wunderlist. You do? I organize you, my work. 
but you know what? Around Wunderlist. The interesting thing is their, their, their perspective on it is in terms of it's, it's, it's like the, the very first dot com bubble. So how are you going to make money out of this? Well, let's see. As soon as I have like one or two million subscribers, I'm going to monetize it. Well, good luck with that. No one cares about it. No one's going to buy a premium for a freaking fucking Tastas just because you're using a wooden uh, I don't know. background. We're, we're, we're actually thinking about taking a subscription to Wunderlist because we're using it as a, as a team. And okay, there's some so, nice feet. So, so I'm it, the man. So it, it, it worked at least for one guy. Now, please don't, <laughs> get, don't, don't get it wrong. I'm, I'm just ranting about this because they're just not getting their ass up over yeah, here. Yeah, but this is, this is shakeout, right? There's... What, what, it's always there's always just one percent that wins, right? You'll always see. But they don't even have a one percent here. It's one company that won so far, and that's SoundCloud. No, there's other stuff that's come out of Berlin and What's been bought that? out. I don't know, but uh, yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> the, there's the, are you, uh, offline. I'll find you some stuff. But well, I don't know, off, we've been well, talking about we this for two, two or three well, years. Well, well, once, once again, when we're talking about this like, like kind of traditional app Didn't startup there a community. Twitter, a tweet, tweet deck or, no, that came out of London, but there was a Twitter app that got bought out of uh, Berlin. Yeah. One of the first big Twitter, yeah. twi I forget yeah. what it was, Twirl. Yeah. That came out of Berlin, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Got bought out, they won. Well, anyways, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not convinced. <laughs> well, and, and the, the, the way... The, I don't know how many how, how many blogs about the Berlin startup scene are ex actually existing. So basically, this this should be just a, a, an economy of multimillionaires and multi-billionaires over here. By uh, now, yeah. I think I, I, th I think in general, they're they're much much better in partying about being part of the scene, of the so-called scene over here, than having a proper business model. And a, a, a proper I was idea. We were, I was talking to Nicole last night, and I. Was com we were comparing San Francisco and Berlin. I think there's there's more. Even the London startup scene is a hundred times bigger than the Berlin one. Let's goddamn face it. Yeah. Well, you'll know about real. more about it than I do. I have to say, I don't uh, I don't live in Berlin. I don't yeah. move it's a little around bit of, the, okay. the software wait, scene. Wait, wait, so. wait, wait, wait. Once again, don't get this wrong. I know a couple of really really cool ones. Oh, yeah. Psylogic is doing amazing stuff. Mateus and uh, um, a former venture beat editor, right? Yeah. He's, he's doing app analysis, right? Absolutely fantastic uh, stuff, right? And you know what? But they're not celebrating it each and every day, right? They're kind of under the radar, doing a proper business, yeah. right? And there you go. Or think about Opeo. Opeo got sold out to Panasonic, right? And uh, I know Armin, uh, uh, well, since they just started it, right? And he's constantly over there in Taiwan, right? But they're just not celebrating it constantly. Right. Right? You won't, you won't see anything. Uh, about them on TechCrunch or on any kind of local European one, they don't. They just don't care about this, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's the difference. That's that's a big difference. Um, and I think in general, it would be it would be kind of appropriate for the German startup scene maybe to go a little bit back to the roots and uh, come out with something interesting um, before you trying to position yourself as the king of the cast of the European startup world or as the next big thing of the global startup world because you're not even in the next 10 things yeah. in the global world in terms of startup community, in terms of um, capitalization, investors' money, and the whole infrastructure that is around this. Right? Once again, don't get it wrong. There are some proper guys over here, but there's nothing, no, nothing as big as um, they're promoting it. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at this. In your face. It's, I'm out of my. I'm actually out of my depth with Berlin startup scene, clearly, yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, I'll look. I'll keep. I always keep an eye on it, and I like coming to Berlin. And I, I like love it. To I totally so love software it. Software events here. There's some my third favorite. Here, right? si yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Once again, and don't get this wrong. There, there are a couple of really cool companies. I'm, I'm just referring to a couple of special ones, and I think they know who I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> so, uh, anyways. Um, yeah, I was kind of expecting to also see a little bit more on the hardware sector. And this would be something, especially Germany. Could, could 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 really evolve. Mm -hmm. We could really work on a on a, on a, on a kind of hard, uh, hardware startup culture because we have the engineers over here, and you yeah. need some proper engineering to build hardware. Uh, and then, you, then you take there's your one Berlin company that's doing yeah. hardware changes. You okay, know, those these guys are doing. It's a very simple. It's seen, been seen before. Solar panel, solar charger. Yeah. But the science that's gone into their charger is yeah. next level, 
and it yeah. makes it way more useful. It actually works. Yeah. Their solution works. They, they won one of the startup competitions at, um, I think it was CBIT this year. And I actually bought their product because I do a lot of solar stuff, mucking around with it. So that, that's one example of a Berlin startup that's doing hardware. I believe they're in Berlin. Yeah. Uh, um, Changes.com, you should check them out. Really good. Yeah. And you know what? It's also very, very rare, just, just as an example, to see um, Berlin software startups here at IFA. So what are you doing? Could, yeah, there's a hall. I'll have to walk through it. There's yeah. a whole uh, hall of software startups really? here somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole section somewhere. Okay. We'll have to go around. Can we just edit it out? <laughs> <laughs> there, that, that's oh, a, here they come. <laughs> 500 of them. <laughs> Sasha, Sasha. <laughs> you better not go in there. <laughs> Oh, people are already already uh, um, blaming me for having a monologue about this. I need to get out. We've yeah. been talking already for. We reden schon uh, über anderthalb Stunden du Vogel. This, this is like the old Problem mit deiner Tastatur mit den ganzen Ausrufezeichen. Du solltest mal checken. This is uh, this is exactly like the old Meet Mobility yeah. podcast. The di difference, like Sasha gets on a rant, right? Big well, one. sometimes you need to the do a rant. The thing is, on, right? the, on the Meet Mobility podcast, I had the Skype back channel, so I could put a massive font. Yeah. Shut up! You're <laughs> it's going on too long. Or we could post edit it. Yeah. So shut up! It's going on too long. Yeah. Uh, how long? I thought I was spo only supposed to be here for an hour anyway. It's well, twenty it's past eleven. It's just, it's just happening, right? On the go. Got, and um, no one else in? Are you just, no, it, uh, am, I, am it, I just it, filling it, in now or what? 11.30. using me? Il I'm using you. I'm <laughs> abusing you. I haven't even actually. had breakfast. You sat there, you've had a rant and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can eat your bun. Uh, Chippy. Yes. Le le huh? That's a good start for you. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about a little bit about the next... W what's up on the horizon for you? Well, we're going to IDF. Yeah, so, um, well, that will obviously be Intel focused. There. We already talked about it. They will talk about Bayer they'll talk about mobile. In general, I think there's a couple of things happening. Um, smart cameras. So this week we saw another iteration, a very nice iteration of the smart camera, this Sony lens, right? So we've seen smart cameras for a while. Sony have had their smart cameras for years. Uh, then came the Galaxy uh, camera. Then came the um, S4 zoom, right? And now we've got this Sony uh, lens, you know it? Yeah, the, the lens that's got the Wi-Fi in it, it's got the sensor in it, and it's got, uh, it's basically just the lens, self-contained camera, clips onto your smartphone, communicates with the app on the smartphone, and then that app is basically the, le uh, the, uh, the viewfinder and the controller for this Sony lens. Have you tried it out? Have you tested yeah, it out? Yeah, the Color has one. It's pretty cool, right? I like the idea. So I think this is another uh, another thing that's going to happen. So there's there's the smart camera thing that's going to evolve pretty quickly, and then smart watches. So clearly smart watches are a good idea, but they are way too early right now, and it's going to take mm. another five years before we see. I, I was really hoping for a flexible display smart watch by Samsung. Mm. And until that flexible display smart watch comes along, so that you can actually have a display that goes further around your hand, mm. then it's not going to work for me. And a day's charge? Sorry. Well, it's tw 25 hours plus. Oh, sorry, 25 and, hours. No, <laughs> uh, and, and 10 hours of uh, continuous uh, uh, usage. It's crazy. It's, that's, that's like the old UMPCs where they had uh, an hour and 30 minutes of battery life. It's laughable. Mm. And that needs to be 10x that. It needs the, to be the, a week's question, battery okay, life. He, he, here's the thing, and I, I agree with you. It has a, th a 340 milliampere hour battery in there, and I think it would run at about 3.75 volt. Yeah. So we're ending up with 1.2, 1.3 watt hour battery. Yeah, okay, it's good. But for a smartwatch, it's not good enough. No, it's not good enough. It's like we, the UMPCs. It was good, but it just not, it wasn't satisfying the market. I was the expecting market. the flexible battery in the wristband. Yeah. It's not it in there. We need to have flexible yeah. battery, flexible screen, need to have a week's battery life, need to have the outdoor readable mm -hmm. display, mm -hmm. e-ink, um, or something similar. Um, uh, and, and, and style. Style is so important, especially for I think the style is good. I'm sorry, it's thick and horrible. No, it's not. It is. You've never seen a smartwatch before. Well, the old smartwatches were even thicker. But exactly. it needs to be thinner. There need to be style options, like you need to have changeable straps. Six, six and, different and colors. Six oh. different, maybe you can even... Come on, walk change. into a jewelry shop. Guys buy watches as jewelry for them, right? And they'll spend 200 euros. Some people spend 75 on a Casio, uh, but they'll, they'll expect it to last for five years and they don't want to change charge it every night. I don't even want to change the battery in this every mm. year, it annoys me. 
So, uh, no, nah, there's a long way to go for smartwatches. But I think that's a very important area. There's going to be a lot of uh, engineering effort going into uh, and research effort going into that, that area. It makes sense, right? Why the hell should your phone vibrate in the pocket? It needs to be on your wrist. Oh, absolutely. And also, uh, with the camera, I like yeah. this idea. Because uh, sometimes you just want to, you know, capture the moment. And as soon as you got your phone out of your pocket, right, it okay, might be gone. that's so another level of catching the exactly, moment. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. just holding it like this. And it gives you this kind of 007 James Bond style moment. Yeah. Uh, NSA is going to love them. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Can, Can I eat a bit of my... No, I have a, have a piece of your... A slice of your egg of the, <laughs> the mm. bun. Mm. <laughs> um, mal kurze Frage... Können wir mal die Aircondition hier anmachen? Ja, ist ein bisschen warm. Ist sie schon an? Noch nicht, wir, wir müssen die hier anmachen. Weil langsam aber sicher. Ja, es wird warm hier. Es wird warm. Um, I think it was very, very crucial for the smart watch market that a premium OEM like Samsung finally entered it. Why? Because right now, seriously, I know the competitors. This is like just two generations ahead of their competitors. Like this is this is a real proper product. Yeah. Right? We're not talking about something that you just can't use at all, which makes no sense in my opinion. Yeah. Right? Um, this this is already. But again, this is the cool. Samsung Q1 of the seven-inch tablet world. Yeah. You remember the Q1, the first yeah. seven-inch tablet that was supposed to be consumer-focused from Samsung. Three years ago. You, the Q1, I'm talking about UMPC 2007. Oh, sorry, 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 no, 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 the first Galaxy Tab came out three years ago. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah no, so, but this is the yeah. Q1, this is the UMPC of the yeah. smartphone oh, world, absolutely, right? absolutely. And there's so, such a long way to go in the smart, smartphone yeah. space. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, we talked about display technology, battery talk, there's also inter interaction oh. technology, perceptual computing, yeah. um, um, you know, finger gestures, all that needs to be sorted out, that needs to evolve. In fact, gesture-based computing has a long way to go. That's a, I think that's a 10-year cycle uh, before we get some sort of commonality oh, on gesture-based yes. computing. People need to standards. know standards. You know, I spoke to Point Grab last year at IDF. Mm. Uh, Point Grab do uh, gesture-based software that works on PCs through the standard camera. Mm. Great stuff. And I'm saying, so, so what are the standards for, for gestures? Well, well, there aren't any. There's no, none, none of these guys, all these guys are doing at the moment is wrapping up as much as they can in IP, right? In, in, in copywriting everything. So there's no, the, the, if, if, if I'm going to do a rant, it's actually going to be about gestures and the, the, the manufacturers of, 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 of hardware that does um, gesture, that supports gesture-based computing need to get together. It needs to be a forum for gestures because if they don't standardize on gestures, it's going to fall flat. N mm. It's never going to take off. Mm. You do not want to go to one device and go like that and then go like that on another device. Do you remember the Nokia Zoom thing yeah. on the N800? Yeah, yeah, which was yeah, great, but yeah. you know, come on, you can't have two, you can't have two types of Zoom. Oh, I agree. So uh, yeah, that would be my rant. But my rant's only like 10 seconds long rather than right. 20 minutes. That wasn't 20 <laughs> minutes. 20 minutes. Jesus, you, 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 you even... Ask the forum, forum. How long was uh, Sasha having a rant? Bullshit. Wie lang war It was like five minutes. <laughs> you know what? I think that the gesture uh, idea and the standards will already change next year when Intel is bringing um, uh, the perceptual computing camera into the Ultrabox. I don't know. If they don't talk to the other manufacturers... They will, of course. And, and they are doing this already. If, 